Thank you, Paul. Music makes me want to hit on a waitress. I don't know why. <laughs> Very nice. Paul Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, our next guest, certainly you may applaud Mr. Schaefer. Yeah, how about the band? Seriously. How about that band? Seriously. <laughs> I have no idea what you said. What did you say? <laughs> we'll talk later. Uh, my next guest, Richard Lewis. I've known this gentleman for years and years. He's a very talented actor. He's a writer and a fine stand-up comedian. He's been working at clubs throughout the country, and uh, he is here in New York City with us this evening. Please welcome Mr. Richard Lewis. Richard Lewis, if you ever get a chance, uh, God, you're... I, I did a worm and right back. I... <laughs> the, the condo in my sneaker, I left for three seconds. You're, you're uh, nice to see you here. You're now living in Los Angeles, and of course, I guess, originally from New York. Is that true? It's absolutely true. And this is, this is a rare trip back to the home uh, territory, huh? Oh, this is, uh, this is a treat and a half to come back. You know, there's a lot of responsibilities when you're here for like an hour and a half. You know, it's like, uh, <laughs> I am trying to fit in. Uh -huh. I mean, I feel like, you know, not to sound arrogant or anything, but you have, I lived here all my life. I come back to the show, and I'm going to go back, and I, you know, I got a call today. I mean, a guy called me up at the hotel because, you know, you publicize where we're staying, which is great. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <laughs> this, this guy was angry at me. For, it used to be a game, Prisoner Ball, in second grade. We used to just try to, it was really a sadistic game. You just try to... Prisoner Ball? Yeah, it just kills many people on the other side. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and I, he was angry at me. You know, if people harbor these little incidents in their lives. I have thousands of them. And this guy, I'm sure he's in therapy about it now, but he chose to call me. Good luck on the Letterman show. And then he says, I hated you. I hated you for that. So that's the kind of mood I'm in. Just that call <laughs> happened about an hour ago. But I'm seeing everyone. You know, You've seen a lot of relatives, oh. I guess, still back here, huh? Yeah, my mom, she's... Uh, I'm sure she, I don't know what time it is now. She's probably cooking now, getting ready for the... Uh, <laughs> it's about 1.11 here in New York. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, that's the only time I have for dinner. It's going to be uh, like an 8 a.m. dinner tomorrow because I have to leave. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm just getting prepared. You know, I'm really... You know, you don't have the... I'm sure you don't have the kind of... Fa well, I know you don't. But uh, the kind of family that I'm going to be in touch with tomorrow, personally. I mean, I love them. Mm -hmm. You never met them. I mean, they, I, they come out occasionally to L.A. But my grandfather would be there. And be like aunts and uncles, mother and all that. And... Yikva, this guy's name, Yikva. He's about 80 years old, and it's a Yiddish it's name. first name? Well, you see, this is what I don't know about him. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a Yiddish name. His name is Phil, which I feel is a, a sensational name. Phil? Phil. You like Phil? Phil is not bad. Yikva, it's, you, no, it means killed by an avalanche in, in Yiddish. <laughs> uh, so he chose that. It's like an albatross he wanted to wear, you know. So he's there, and he, uh, he pinches us. Ever since I was a little kid, it's like a habit. I think it's... It's not just a Jewish thing. I mean, everybody, but he used to go for us, you know, pinch our, pinch our behind. And I used Yikva. to like... Yikva. yes. And so I'm a little uptight about that, because 8 o'clock tomorrow, I'm going to have to, just, you know, <laughs> always run around the table, like practice my D around the table, you know, kind of thing. And, yeah. uh, and my mother would be cooking, and uh, I, I saw half of the relatives today who came into the hotel because she publicized where, where we yeah. stay here. Did we so get, they, would you mention the room number also? No, that's, no. Uh, there's a poster out front, and uh, <laughs> so they're going to be there. You know, I, I was talking to my cousins today, and, you know, you get to know where your roots are and all that, you know, because you know, I'm a little, well, everybody's a little crazy, but I know I am, and uh, a little neurotic, and I, I was looking at my cousins relate to each other, and it's like, the thing is, they knew the same aunts and uncles I did, which is not so profound, but it was just something no, that interested yeah, me when I thought yeah, of it. Would only, it would only follow. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I was telling the advice I used to get from my old man used to be crazy. First of all, Yikfa, I used to ask advice because the old guy, the old Chinese sage, I always think that would be so great to have that kind of Chinese mentality in mm -hmm. my house. And he was about 80 when I was like in third grade, so he wasn't like coming to little league games at that point, you know. So. <laughs> but I said, Yikfa, I, I'm, I broke up with someone, I can't go to the prom, and all, whatever I was saying, you know. And, and he would say, uh, literally, he would say, uh, like, you're me, right? And he'd go, mm -hmm. hey, uh, hey, man, hi, man. Yikva, I love you. I know that means something. Uh, in another lifetime, I don't know, right? <laughs> then I go to my father, and he would like, well, no, because Yikva was my father's father, right? So, uh, yeah. once again, I'm trying to make it clear for myself, not for you. I know you understand. <laughs> Name tags might help tomorrow when you get to the house. Name tags, yeah. very important. Yeah, yeah it's funny. Yeah. I'm the cousin all yeah. Well, 
So, uh, so the advice my old man used to give backfired on all of us. Like, I couldn't understand his advice, but my old man would say stuff like, because I was afraid of dogs as a kid. Because uh, we had the dog, but my mother was so into cleanliness, she made the dog flip out and had like a little breakdown. It, was, uh, it used to I, literally wipe its paws off before it walked into the, the house on the side door. Oh, yeah. I felt bad for this dog. The dog developed a nervous, like a little tickle in its throat before he, you know, he barked. He used to go, <coughs> <coughs> that's what he used to do before. <laughs> so, so my father knew I was petrified. Look, uh -huh. the dog went out and bought a handgun. He hated us, you know, so I, I hated the dog here. He ran away. So finally, I said, Dad, I'm petrified of dogs. She said, never show a dog you're afraid. Pop, whatever you say, all right? So I used to go to school every morning, and this Nazi Doberman Pinscher with helmet, I used to <laughs> who stepped down to chase me. And uh, I used to get like, ripped to shreds every morning. So I, I turned around one morning, I said, the dog is right here. You be the dog. You're being very good. I'm doing pretty well. Your yeah. dog, the young, Yikva. I'm the dog and Yikva. So the dog just looked at me, and I went, uh, you mutt. You're a mutt. I am not afraid of you. You hear me? You're a mutt. He jumped. A bullseye. It was a perfect bullseye. <laughs> right? I had to throw. And he, he actually spoke an English sentence. The dog said, look, I wouldn't have bit you. You were too cocky. You were too cocky about it, you know? <laughs> so then I go to school, and I'm bloody. I, I'm swimming. I asked Jacob how to swim. He doesn't know how to swim. I didn't understand him. So ask I said, Pop, Yikma how do you swim? swim? Well, he didn't know how. He didn't know how. That was it. So uh, <laughs> I go to a hotel pool with my old man. And I was petrified. I was eight years old. I had all these lifesavers on, whatever they're called. And he got me. Can I stand up for a second? Please do. Frightening. This is a frightening experience. Or I could stand for you. Oh, no. no that would, if I was doing, only if I did drugs would that work. And I okay, don't okay. So I'm standing up, and here's the pool, right? And I'm here, and my old man's behind me, and he gets behind me, right? And yeah. he says, uh, Find Atlantis! And that was it, you know? Uh -huh. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so that's, that's advice. Yeah. Right? But yeah. I, look, I love These them. These are the they, folks you'll be with uh, tomorrow there. Yeah. Now, um, I did that in the past. You, know? you, uh, you seem like you're a troubled sort, I guess nervous <laughs> coming uh, from L.A. and so forth. Was it much of an adjustment when you started living there, actually, from well, New York City? Well, you know, because when we were out there, I, you know, I'm a little frenetic. And uh, in L.A., it's, you know, it is. It's slower. And uh, I, uh, I, remember I used to go to this bank. Uh, it's like Hebrew night for me up here, but there's a bank, uh, and it was... Uh, you know, there was like these Talmudic scholars used to go to the same bank with me. And this is an expression, I'm sure you probably, I mean, you're hip, you gotta know, uh, oy vey, you know that expression, oy vey, I've right? heard it, yeah. <laughs> these guys, they'd walk around very slowly. If I'd be, if I'd get behind one of these cats, forget it, I would be there for a season because they would, you know, That's they, it, would, they would do prayers before. That. It was unbelievable. It would take hours to get my, my three dollars out, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they would go, oy, and go, ah, we don't need vey. They wouldn't even get to vey out there. They were like, I'm, a couple of weeks later, they'd still be on land, oh, then they'd be vain. You know, they would vey then, you know? <laughs> but I live now alone, and when you were out there last, I had a girlfriend, and I just broke up, and it's a nightmare living out there alone, because at least in New York here, I love New York City, and the one thing that I'm in touch with now is that at least you get into a cab, and boom. You can boom somewhere in a couple of seconds. You know, you can just boom somewhere mm -hmm. if you're lonely. Sure. In LA, you call a cab, you know, it's like, uh, you know, what month? You can reserve it yeah, and all that yeah, stuff. Sure. <laughs> So I, I was living with someone, I broke up, and that's a whole other thing. And, uh, but I tried to get a roommate, and I, I was, in fact, I, I never told you this, I tried to go to a roommate place. I tried, I went. I felt like an roommate. idiot going $55 to get your perfect match. I never thought I would be just a Momo to do this kind of thing, you know. And I'm sitting there like, can you just play a part again? I'll be happy to. What, uh, what is it now? Well, it's like you could just we, be the person. Let me just, oh. before we uh, get to the roommate part, we are uh, desperately short here on time. So oh. just... Uh, Kind of oh, an indication there, just a hint. Oh, okay. Finish it up and let's get on with it. Okay. I don't mean, I don't, <laughs> certainly don't, don't mean that to, to frighten you. Wipes out the operetta. I no, was going to. No, oh, no, 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 one so, of my one of my job requirements. I huh? have to keep this moving. I don't want to talk about the roommate thing, quite frankly. Oh, you'd rather not talk no, about. No, I just rather talk about uh, because that was that's like that's had my past already. I mean, it backfired on me. What's important is why I'm living alone. I mean, that's how I feel. I, I just damn, I, I love this woman. Yeah. I loved her, and I, I'm going out now with friends. You know, they're taking me around. You know, they take me to places and. I'm meeting the women, and I'm always thinking of my ex. I went out with a terrific woman. What's uh -huh. that? I, terrific woman, and... Uh... <laughs> okay, I tell you what. Uh, I think it's interesting to leave here. Uh, Richard met a terrific woman. And... <laughs>